Good morning, everybody. How are you? Uh, welcome to New York uh, to our monthly webcast of, of, our, of our peripheral live cases. Um, today is kind of an odd day in New York, and I want to explain what's going on and why you're being introduced from the cat lab. We obviously had the remnants of Florence yesterday here in New York and had some torrential flooding up in uh, different areas. So some of our, our, our usual colleagues like Dr. Kapoor and Dr. Singla are caught up in this uh, kind of uh, heavy flooding. So therefore, they're not here. So myself and Dr. Guja uh, will go ahead and kind of start this case off from the room and we'll just take it as is. I think we'll have more of a conversation today between me and Dr. Guja um, and Asma uh, and uh, we'll make it interesting in that manner. We have a very, very interesting live case today, um, and uh, Asma is going to go ahead and get to it, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Asma? Hello, everybody. Um, so we have here with us a 76-year-old right? gentleman who has a uh, past medical history of hypertension, oh. hyperlipidemia, diabetes, smoking, prior MIs, who presented to us with um, uh, kind of impending CLI-like symptoms, very low threshold claudication, which is basically uh, uh, going into rest pain now. Underwent uh, 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 a few weeks back, we did a DCB of a mid uh, SFA ISR, which was about 80 to 90 <laughs> percent, and there was a popliteal le lesion that was um, more severe, 90 to 95 percent. We did DCB um, of both the inflow disease to improve the proximal flow. And uh, now the plan is today to um, uh, to try to instate one, maybe two vessels below the knee, um, which is what he's here for today. Those are the patients. He's on aspirin. Um, I forgot to mention he's also on Plavix, Lipitor, Lisinopril, and Metoprolol. Those are his labs, pretty much with the normal limits. His ABIs uh, are more um, uh, reduced on the... Lidocaine? Yes, lidocaine. More severely reduced on the right side and on the uh, point six five. Next, uh, could you play that? There's a there's a button on the right, uh, right, right lower corner of the screen. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That is a runoff uh, at the time of the first diagnostic angio when we fixed that ISR. And also, if you can see at uh, number fifteen that near the joint line, we can see that tight lesion of the pop, and. Um, uh, we, we did DCB of both locations. Next. And this is a still image of uh, what we had at that time of the, uh, of the trifurcation. Very complex disease there. Next. Um, thank you. And then this is uh, DSA. Could you play that again? Okay. And uh, we'll s that basically shows uh, that, yeah, it looks like at that time we thought PT was the more dominant vessel, but now looking at our angiogram today, it looks like uh, PT, but it looks like, uh, okay, AT also looks a little bit more plump after uh, the revascularization. Next. So uh, this was our um, strategy is basically to go uh, six friend CFA long sheet as we always do up and over. And uh, initially we're going to try to attempt an integrate CTO via escalation and with the directional support gatherer. Uh, and then uh, if, if that fails, we uh, will have a low threshold to go uh, right PT access, uh, basically uh, ultrasound guided pedal axis. And NGMAX is the anticoagulation. Next. Next. Actually, why don't we wait on this okay. one, guys? Um, I want to just go over the angiogram with the, with the audience. So uh, what, 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 I, what I think we need to understand is, I mean, there's a lot of talk about below knee access and, and when to do it, when not to do it. Uh, you know, and I think one of the things we pride ourselves in Mount Sinai is the safety um, and on our efficiency when we do these procedures. So generally speaking, you know, I think what you need to understand is the anatomy prior to ever making a decision, whether to go below or above. First of all, you need to understand the tortuosity of, of your iliacs. I think one of the things that, 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 that always precludes uh, success is if you have reduced pushability. So if you have a heavily tortuous iliac, you can either think about anti-grade or, 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 or uh, up and over, or, or um, sorry, um, the retrograde through the pedal access. So Ray, uh, just slowly put, a, actually let him, uh, you can, Flora, put a wire in the puppeteel. So, so what, what, what do you need to sit there and understand is, how is it, you know, and what, what is gonna help me get the best experience in terms of being able to cross this lesion? 
If you have a heavily torqued zilliac, what's going to happen is one, you're going to reduce torque, torque ability of your wire. Two, you're going to reduce pushability of your devices. So you may decide to go anti-grade. If you go anti-grade, what, what, what may happen is you are obviously going to be expose yourself to more radiation, more patient discomfort, but also you're also going to end up having uh, issues with uh, more, uh, uh, possible increased complications for you at the end of the procedure when it comes to closure, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the other issue also you need, you, you need to think about is when to go retrograde. So a lot of times what, what our, our options have been is when we failed, rather than go anti-grade, we go up and over to begin, try wire escalation technique as we're going to illustrate here, and we're just going to go ahead and just, uh, uh, if that fails, go pedal access. So the third part is when are you going to do pedal access and up and over at the same time? And I think that's when you have to look at the complexity of the vessel. While, while, Ray, while Ray Lascano is going to get the wire over there for us, uh, what, 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 what I want to talk to you about is, is, is talk to you a little bit about the, the, the cap morphology and the morphology of the lesion when, when you decide to go dual access from the beginning. Generally speaking, if you have, if you have a very diffuse cap with no ability of, of really discerning which is the named vessel, whether it's an anterior tibial, posterior tibial, or, or perineal, when you don't have a calcific border that gives you a hint as to which is the vessel you should poke, or when you have collaterals coming from the area where you're going to try to cross the CTO, which is probably the only collateral in the leg that is keeping the foot alive and say it's feeding the vessel that's your target vessel to revascularize, then at that stage, you may want to get uh, a pedal access to begin with, okay? So, so I, think, I think in this case, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to quickly go to Dr. Guja, who's going to show you the anatomy, and, then, and he's going to start with pedal access here, and then, and then we're going to go ahead and, and take this over. Guja, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Yep, fine cross on it. Can you guys go to the ultrasound, please? Okay, there you go, you're on. All right, so the way um, we are planning to get a, a PT access, because PT becomes the dominant vessel here. Um, again, mostium of the PT is totally closed, and I think the TP trunk is occluded. Um, even, the, even the docella speed is reconstituted here, so we can go either way's access, I think. Um, but we have a uh, good stump on the AT. Yeah, so, so this is a good point. So when I, when I show you the angiogram, I'll show you. You want to look at the straight line shot and the most pushability in order to be able to get through. The AT is occluded and very tortuous up top. And I think you have multiple segments of occlusion. Here, the guy has rest pain. So clearly, this is going to be the vessel that we can get into. Uh, and, and that's why we chose the PT. Go ahead, Guj. Any good right. anatomy here? So, yeah. So that's why we choose the PT because going from above, if the PT doesn't have a stump, so probably we have the best chance of getting the PT from below and the AT from above. And also the complexity of the popliteal and right. the occlusion is so that it really is, you, you could almost predict that this is going to be a very difficult uh, cross and you want to do this in a, in a very timely manner. Obviously we're doing it as a live case. Go ahead. So the way we want to do the PT axis or any, any pedal axis is every pedal artery has two pedal veins. As we spoke about during the previous live cases, as you see, so uh, PT should be, should be getting, the axis should be getting at least an inch above the level of the medial malleolus. Uh, because the amount of compression, if you want to compress the artery, Perfect. you have more, right um, you have more chance of compressing the artery and attaining hemostasis uh, if you get it above the level of the medial malleolus. Like uh, dorsalis pedis is better to get it below the level of the ankle. So, so as we see here, uh, we can see the vessel has calcified and you can see two pedal veins always uh, with the pedal artery. So normally the way I do it is I go to the I go to the uh, tibula bone and then I keep moving more laterally. As soon as I see the veins, I compress, and you can see the two veins being compressed and the artery right in the center. You can see two veins. Uh, you give him a, right a, in the a, a, a no no give him a, this one here go. When you're done with it, just throw it away. Ready guys, focus on his hand, please. Yeah, but, yep. Go ahead, I'll show him by hand. You want to Come to the camera. Uh, good. Mm -hmm. So this is one, one vein which is compressed. This is the other vein being compressed. So this is your artery right in the center. Yep. The reason why you don't see the pulsations is because it's a totally closed vessel and the flow is probably extremely monophasic. So that's why we are not seeing the pulsations of the arteries. That tells you how bad the flow is in that vessel. So that's probably the reason why he has a rest pain because he doesn't have pulsatile flow in that vessel. 
So, so does color Doppler help uh, uh, Guja? Because I mean, I mean, in terms of what yes, you guys. Yes. So, do. color Doppler does help. Um, normally, when you're using when you're using a hockey stick, uh, putting a color Doppler, your hockey stick gives you a very high 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 kind of resonance. So, technically, power Doppler is not necessary. But if you're having difficulty, you're not convinced that that's the artery. I'm pretty convinced because you can see why don't you put Doppler and just show them so I think I think guys you know as you know you've seen all of me uh, of my entire career get angiographic access I rarely ever pull out the ultrasound so you can probe. clearly see but the so only I vessel the which has the flow right there right so there. blue anything which comes towards you is is blue anything which goes away from you is red Excellent. and regular probe right so you can clearly see the only vessel which is getting the flow there which is blue coming towards you is right in the center you see that so it, the, the flow is so slow that you can barely see it. So only when I compress the veins, you can you can see it right I there. I saw it better before. Right there. Right there. Right there. There you go. You can see it. That's your pulse style flow. Now, now one one comment I do want to make is that that you know this is a very important technique when you're trying to get these kind of vessels in severely diseased vessels. This really is going to help you to be able to get to these vessels. But for let's get let's show them how to do it. Let me put on some lights. So, so as, okay. one second, before you say that, while you were giving lidocaine, what, what, what I wanted to do was just to say that what we've done is, our, our plan here is not to put a sheath. So we're going to put an 014 wire uh, up and a dilator of the sheath. We're going to give our cocktail, similar to the radials, which we give is what, 100 to 200 mi micrograms of nitroglycerin, 2.5 to 5 milligrams of verapamil, and just, and then leave it. We, we work on Angiomax as always, and this way we will not do this. All right, go ahead, uh, talk to so, them. I said the medial Can you show his hands too, please, same time? Can you do two screens, one of his hands and one of the, uh, of the uh, so ultrasound? So we check the medial malleolus. I usually go two finger breaths above. Um, the only reason is because, as I said, the hemostasis. And then we tried, I usually compress, I compress so that I can compress the veins. So you can actually see both the veins being compressed, right? So that way I know that for sure my needle is not going to enter the veins. Um, especially when you have a monoplasic flow like this, um, you're, you're, you're more the possibility of getting into the veins is higher, especially if you have a CTO below. So I usually take uh, the needle, small needle, go in. We enter it. You can okay, see the needle. Okay, hang on, sir. Look, we're trying to. I told you we're going to go from the leg. That's what we're trying to do now. Sorry about so that. The spasm rates are much lower in the in the artery than uh, in the pedal vessels than in the in the radial vessels. You saw how he was tenting the vessel there. That's a very important sign of what he did. You see how nice so he tented it right there? You can so see the vessel So you moving. want to tent it right on the, on, on the vessel, right there. So you're not going to see extremely great amount of flow. Sometimes it's very hard to poke and it rolls off. Yeah, so that's, that's what's happening something. here because of the calcification. Just a dilator. You go with a stiff one, but just a dilator. Also, the other important thing is when we use the uh, the sheath uh, after we do it, we use a stiff dilator because sometimes the skin and the vessels are so calcified, it's very difficult to get in. So you could say, well, why did you start the Angiomax before you got access? I mean, uh, you know, with ultrasound, I think it's it's a lot easier to go ahead and do it. And either way, there's a very compressible zone for us. So we'll just compress it if we need to. But you know, we've done honestly uh, thousands of these procedures without having uh, any major so issues. You can see the so artery being worried. rolled off, right? So you can see the artery just slipping off as, as I'm getting access. Uh, this is what you can see with ultrasound that you can't see with uh, fluoroscopy. You've seen all of you have seen me get fluoroscopy multiple times here, and I think that uh, you know this is a very elegant technique that Dr. Guja is demonstrating so nicely. You want, you want a uh, flora? Yeah. A little mm -hmm. bit of flow here. I think Very we little bit of flow. Do it on the floor. Mm -hmm. So these are tough accesses because the vessels are quite diseased. 
And I think that's uh, that's uh, akin to that's showing you how difficult this really is. So, so let me, as as Dr. Guja is working here, because I'm showing, let me let me talk to you a little bit about um, our 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 cocktail. So, you know, we do exactly, you know, there's a lot of things that you can give for vasodilators. Uh, there's something called, I think it's called the Tammy cocktail or something that yes, they're talking about. Yes. You know, to us, it's really just keep it simple. I mean, I think number one is keep the, keep the patient anticoagulated. You want to keep the patient anticoagulated because I think that this is a very small vessel, and Dr. Guja told you, very, very poor flow. So there's, and when you put in any sort of device into this vessel, you're going to go ahead and have thrombosis of this vessel very, very quickly. So that's one. Second thing uh, you also want to talk about, you want to do is prevent vasospasm. It's a calcified vessel, but yet, yet spasm is something that's going to occur. So because spasm is going to occur, as soon as you get access, you want to go ahead and give your cocktail. Uh, you could, you know, some, if you're planning on putting a sheet through, you probably, you could, you could go ahead and flush with heparin and leave the heparin in the sheet to prevent thrombosis, or you could open the, 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 uh, the valve of the sheet and let, let it bleed back so that there's no stasis of blood at the tip of the sheet. Third is, uh, you know, as far as injecting through here, you can, but generally speaking, we, don't, we do our angiography from above and we do microcatheters through this access point to inject the site at which, uh, you know, we're looking for the occlusion. Um, I don't know if you, how many of you saw, were here at Link last year, at Link Mount Sinai, and um, we did a, a similar case where we failed twice from above. And so we brought him down from Beetle, and Dr. Guja and I, we got through within 20 minutes. So I can tell you here, uh, he's just gotten through, and he's just going to show you. We're going to go on Flora now, just to show you, and then we'll, we'll show the angiographically. So I think it was a very nice demonstration of how to get access. And I think, I think once, you know, one, the one thing you don't have to worry about here is that you're in the vein. Because one thing for sure that he's able to visualize is that he is in the artery. So, you know, why don't we do an angiographically? Let's just take a picture just so everybody can see it. So what we're going to do is, we're going before we give any lidocaine or I mean um, any cocktail or anything, or change out the so wire. If you, before you show, it's definitely in the artery because I'm hitting the okay. uh, vessel. So I just wanted to show you how high we have a PT yep, axis. that's a great point. It's very important. So we are almost at the level above the level of the ankle. This is where you actually want to get the PT axis. You don't want to get it below this. That's the reason I was having that that rolling phenomenon. The lower you get, the more amount of roll you're going to get on the PT because it, get, it goes below the level uh, um, right behind the medial malleolus. So the amount of hematoma rates are much higher, the spasm rates are higher. You're, and again, you have to understand there is a posterior, posterior collateral coming from the communicating artery coming from the uh, peroneal, which you don't want to lose. That's why you want to get, so AT, you want to get it as low as possible. PT, you want to get it as high as possible because the amount of compression you'll get by attain, to attain hemostasis mm -hmm. is much higher in a PT at the level of the uh, above the level. Now you can clearly see you're in the perf. artery. A little bit of a perf posterior. So I think we're going to put the sheet in now. Put a, put a sheet in it and that'll so probably, or it might the, be bleeding around the uh, yeah, needle. Yeah, bleeding around the needle. So yep. It's actually not a perf. It's very difficult to get a perf. Um, I, even if you have through and through access, it's very difficult to get. It's probably the, because we left the needle there and he's on Angiomax. It's probably having a little bit of flow around the uh, needle. All right, wonderful. Perfect. So walk that wire out and, and then, so what I normally do is I walk this wire out. We're going to give our antispasmodics guys, can I have the nitro nitroglycerin and stuff? No, no, that's not a sheet. That's just a, that's just a dilator. Mm. I'm just having resistance here. Why is it? What happened? Uh, resistance with the wire coming. Okay. Yeah, got it. Okay. So we went, at, we went ahead and, uh, and removed it. So now we're just going to let it bleed, and then we're going to go ahead and go with a, a wire. But I want to show you our, while they give you the antispasmodics, I want to show you our occlusion and why we decided to do this. Okay. So you can see the access. You can see our angiogram here. And you can go ahead and give it through. Perfect. Yeah. So you can see our access here. When I inject, you're going to see the cal level of calcification at the level of the distal pop. You can see that the flow is very, very slow from above. And you can also see here that as it comes down, there's really no named vessels. Okay, I don't know. Is that a PT? Is that a collateral? I don't know. Is that an AT? Is that a collateral? I have no idea. And, and what's, what's that below? Is that going to be a perineal? We're really not sure. So I think at this stage, what we're going to do is, while Dr. Guja gives this, we're going to have Asma to go to scene minus for me, Asma. And what we're going to do is, and one more. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to show you the foot vessels. One more. This is, this is the mistake. And you can see here, one more. This is just, there we go. So you can see here, when you look at the foot, that the perineal does come in late. There's occlusions of the perineal. And then the posterior tibial is, is the one that's going to actually come down slowly, very, very slowly, as you can see. Uh, and very, very late. There it comes. It's actually competing with the perineal at that spot. So at this stage, we're, we're going to go ahead and, and you can see the posterior tibial is the only vessel that goes into the foot. So one of the arguments could have been is why, why, why are you guys getting posterior tibial access? Why can't you get anterior tibial or perineal access? I think what I, what I, what I feel is that the chances of occluding these vessels are so, so low that, that I think that there is no issue in terms of doing it with the posterior tibial access. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get a, get a fielder and a fine cross from below. I've got a fielder and a fine cross from above, okay? And I'm just gonna go ahead I'll just go with the fine cross. I don't think we need an 018 system. But I'm predicting that we won't need an 018. Actually, you can, you can take a trailblazer if you want. Fielder and a trailblazer. Okay. Get a fielder and an 018 trailblazer. Got it. And so what I'm going to do is, and I think this makes a lot of sense in some ways, because if, if you want to go ahead and, and, uh, and, and uh, what is it called, upgrade this or escalate this, you obviously can. So I think what I'm going to do is just put the wire in here, go in, and I'm just going to go ahead and just probe this uh, and then be ready to do a wire escalation technique. Guys, I think now's a good time to go to Asma's lecture on wire escalation. And let's go to that, uh, her lecture and let's let her talk a little bit about that. And me and Dr. Guja will go ahead and comment. Ray, can you uh, load the, the, Thank the, you. the, can you load the, the what yeah. your knees bro? So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the below the knee uh, wire choices that we have for complex yeah. legions with yeah. some uh, uh, more highlights on the CTO wires. So we have two types of platforms. We try to use uh, uh, 014 platforms, uh, just basically the same coronary which wire choices as the coronaries. But in case the lesion is tough and you know there's severe calcification, um, so then we tend to go to the 018 uh, platforms next. Next. Okay, so this is a very, very uh, comprehensive uh, slide which basically demonstrates all the, um, almost all the wire choices we have um, be below the knee. So uh, here we can see they try to classify it as uh, stenosis or a subtotal lesion and occlusion. So if there's a stenosis, we try to use the wires which are hydrophilic because those are the wires that will try to find microchannels. So most commonly we will use command or fielder and Abbott uh, or, or fielder XT. Um, however, if we have an actual occlusion or a CTO, then we try to use um, the more stronger, um, you know, uh, uh, wires, which are uh, specialty wires for below the knee, uh, which are basically Abbott Win 200T, Confianza 12, Abbott Connect Flex, Abbott Connect. Uh, 250T and Asahi Astaro 30. The last three wires are 018 platforms. Next. Um, so just like I was uh, saying, if it's a subtotal lesion, we see these, you know, there's some micro channels or, uh, you know, um, uh, which, we w which we commonly find with uh, wires that are uh, tapered tip, hydrophilic coated wires. Fielder XT tends, Fielder XT and Command actually tend to be the common wire choices here in our lab. Next, um, I, I al already spoke about this, the field XT, it's, it's a tapered tip uh, polymer jacketed wire, 014 platform, next. It's not a heavy wire at all, it's, it's very fine. Um, then the Abbott Command ES, it, this is a wire which, which um, is, um, is, is relatively new, ES meaning extra support, it's, it's a little bit better than our other regular command wire in, in the sense that it gives you some extra support. It's a good wire to know and to have handy in your lab. Um, it's a kind of um, low to intermediate tip load, 2.8 grams, and uh, it's quite sturdy and it's steerable, and uh, it's also polymer jacketed though. Next. Uh, now coming to the actual um, uh, specialty wires, the, the CTO wires, and uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about a few of those that we commonly use and why. Um, uh, next. Um, so so the, the goal here is to cross the lesion and also to straight state true lumen, um, which is in contrast to the SFA CTOs where we are a little bit more cavalier and we know we tend to go subintimal and you know we in, in the below the knee space we try to sp uh, stay as much uh, true lumen as possible. Next. 
Uh, next, next. Okay, that. Okay, so the true lumen wires usually we tend to use are have are usually very heavy wires, so to say, like 12 to 30 grams uh, tip load, and they have to have a supportive shaft uh, or and core and have to be pushable, and that's the characteristics that uh, we're looking for. And um, next. So I'll, I'll just uh, touch upon a couple of these wires here. Um, you know, uh, Confianza Pro 12 is our, uh, you know, it's a wire which we tend to use earlier in the algorithm, and it's so it's a over and four platform. It's a 20 gram tip load, as 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 the name says, uh, or, or sorry, it's a 20 gram tip load, yes. And it's a tapered tip wire with a 008 uh, 008 taper from an over and four, and it's also uh, it has a hydrophilic, like the very very uh, proc uh, very very proximal tip of the wire is hydrophilic. And um, next, uh, then this is uh, this is a very good. Uh, it's a it's a strong but also a, a good wire to know and to have in your armamentarium. It's a it's the Abbott Win 200T wire. Uh, it's a specialty wire and it's uh, also O14 platform, medium support. The tip load is around thir 13 grams and it's not a coated wire, so it's basically essentially used for crossing. If you know that you're, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're, you're crossing it in the proximal or the distal gap, uh, you know, it's it's not a, uh, uh, it's a, it you use it specifically to target that. Next, and um, this is uh, our next wire is a Stato 20 wire, uh, which is basically an again an 014 4 wire, uh, which uh, a steel core wire, very heavy wire. It's a 20 gram tip load wire, and you know, it's also a tapered wire, and it's also uh, used for crossing a CTO. It's heavily calcified CTO. It's a it's a it's a heavy duty wire. Next, and we don't use it in our lab that much, but uh, some people tend to use the Victory 14 wire. You know, these are considered good good f uh, uh, specialty wires as well, a medium support wires, and the tip load ranges anywhere from uh, 12 to 30 grams, and, and they have a hydrophilic tip to non tapered. Next, and a start of 30 uh, is a is a very very heavy duty wire. It's like a spear. It's tapered tip and it has a 30, 30 gram tip load and and then it's essentially a you know a starter wire that's made for um, peripherals and it's an open eight uh, open eight shaft wire so so you know uh, 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 if you're using it uh, you know we have to remember to change the uh, the guiding support catheter to an open open eight system next uh, another wire which uh, which uh, deserves mention is an uh, uh, is Connect 250T and that's another open eight wire kind of very similar to a start of 30. It has a 30 gram tip load. It's also a tapered tip. It has a 013 tip. It's also like a spear. So again, very, very high end wire, very strong wire. Na next. Uh, Connect Flex is a, is a little bit more uh, a flim uh, flexible tip wire again, but has a you know somewhat heavy tip load of 12 grams and it's also an 018 wire. Next. Another Boston Victory wire, which again we don't use, but uh, like there's a fort Victory 14, there's also a Victory 18 line, and and you know these are these are good wires too. Next, um, so I just want to mention a couple of slides about the subintimal um, uh, passage in the below the knee. We tend to stay away from it and not to cause uh, much subintimal dissection in the below the knee space because you know, they're kind of like the uh, the coronaries. We try to stay true lumen to true lumen as much as possible. But in case we have to, we uh, the connect and the um, the command ES wires are usually the wires which we which we tend to use for it. Um, uh, these basically have to be wires which can make a loop and uh, can prolapse. Next. Uh, so like I said, and you know, if the you have to use the 018 wire, then you can use basically a V18 or a connect flex wire. Uh, next. Um, that's just a command wire characteristics open for very low tip load, yeah. I mean, you know, kind of low to intermediate 2.8. Uh, next, uh, and then just uh, just my last slide here. It's basically uh, the kind of uh, support catheters we have available. We we typically use um, you know fine cross, um, but we can use a quick cross or you know um, a, a, a trailblazer. We also we tend to use a lot of times. We also tend to use the coronary support catheters like you know uh, Corsair or. Microcross or um, uh, or um, you know the the uh, th those uh, the coronary support catheters basically is, yeah so uh, however um, uh, 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 Cook has a CXI catheter which can be used uh, you know basically uh, uh, bec it has a system like uh, an 035 outside and an 018 yeah. inside so yeah. it tends to be more supportive we we don't typically use the damage here but no, but that's a good option to too um, uh, next. Th that's basically it, actually. This was my last slide. Thank you very much. The genital branch is kind of collateral.
Oh, so you guys are done. So, so I, I think that's a very good um, um, overview, Asma, and I think that's very, very important. So you can see here, as we're trying to see where we're going, this wire is moving very, very slowly. So l let me get you up to date on what we've done. So let me come off this. So what we did was we changed out for an 018 trailblazer, okay, and that's our 018 trailblazer from below. We changed out for a sharper wire like a Confianza, and now what we're doing is we're trying to figure out where the cap is, and you can see this wire is moving really, really smoothly here. So, so the question is, are, is the, that's not a smooth area here. I think maybe, nope, that's, maybe this is not it. So the question is, are we in, the, in this similar area as what, uh, what we think we are, or is this a different area? I'm not really certain. And I think that's part of the reason why we got below knee access here, to try to see it. The other thing is whether Carthy can do external ultrasound to try to show whether we can see where the PT really is, you know, and then take it from there. So that's definitely not it, we know that. There we go, oh no, that's not, that doesn't look like it either. So Gooch, can you do a external ultrasound and see whether you can see it? Because what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out with some roadmap as Dr. Gooch comes around to see where the, where the PT is. I can show you here in a picture, let me just take a quick DSA shot here before Dr. Gooch comes yeah. to show you where our wire is. And where 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 mm -hmm. the nubbin may be. One second, Dr. Gujal, just take a picture. So there are obviously uh, you know anomalies in, in where the PT takes off. So the question here is, is that where we're supposed to be? I would assume so. You know, so I'm gonna try to steer my wire towards that right there, but I I'm not certain because it seems to be a collateral, or is that one above? I'm not certain where we are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask Dr. Guja to take a look and then let me know whether he sees our wire. And I think this is how you can do ancillary ultrasound along with, along with uh, your, your particular uh, intervention. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this wire back slightly uh, so he can try to see what he can see. And then I wanna see whether under ultrasound he's able to see our situation. You're gonna have to go underneath the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is another technique that I think more and more, you know, you, you, can, you can think about. This is actually, actually not been done only by us. I mean, obviously you have, uh, you know, uh, what's the, I can't remember his name. Oh my Jihad. goodness. Huh? No, not Jihad. Jihad doesn't, uh, not this one. It was, interventions were done through the SFA in Brooklyn, um, in the SFA and in Carotid by Enrico Asher. Enrico Asher actually published uh, the total, uh, what is it called, um, dialysis carotid angioplasty completely done with ultrasound and he's also published that uh, you know crossing CTOs under ultrasound was also another possibility so I think this is clearly something in these kind of complex lesions you can see here we've got the best of the both worlds we've got below access we've got above access and our wire is still going somewhere where we don't know wh where it is right now where that wire was mobilizing I really don't think that that was the uh, posterior tibial artery so, so here's Dr. Guja now, he's gonna go in, he's gonna try to find the posterior tibial artery. And the, you know, part of that limitation is also the technology and how we have the setup. We have this huge C-arm in the way, we have all these things going on at once, so it's very difficult to do it in real time and full time. Obviously having Guja here, myself, you know, Asma, everybody here, it seems to help us a little bit better to be able to do this. But I'm trying to understand, do we, can we see this under ultrasound and then, and then take it from there? Let's see whether we see anything. There you go, right there, it's fine. So if you guys can go on the ultrasound and he will talk, and now he's not sterile, so he can touch and uh, he'll tell us what he sees. And when, tell me if you want me to move the wire, Gooch. So he's looking for a spot here, trying to find a posterior tibial. Some more goo, please. So good job. I mean, uh, tell me about you know the utilization of external ultrasound. So uh, I mean, I do it regularly right. in, in the office. So I I usually I prefer to actually do the whole intervention on ultrasound. Right. But again, he's not he's fr I mean we didn't anticipate this. We didn't frog leg him. Normally, if I anticipate that I'm doing completely with ultrasound, I frog leg him. So it's easy the whole because thing? Uh, posterior tibial comes more posteriorly but dives in and goes behind the popliteal pop like popliteal fossa. So you have to really go down. You can actually, uh, posterior tibial is probably the most easily visible vessel. Perfect. On ultrasound, uh, if, you, if you can see it to the TP trunk. So let's take uh, a look. Anterior tibial is the one which goes through the interosseous membrane, which gives you the most trouble when you're actually visualizing it. 
There you go. I can frog leg him right there for you a little bit. So if you want me to wiggle my wire, I will. Sometimes when you do reverberations, and wow, I can't believe I said that early in the morning. Uh, if you do reverberations in the, uh, of the wire, it's easily seen uh, in the vessel. That's not it, obviously. Uh, where is my wire? That's much higher. So right? your wire is right here. I can right. see it. Okay, good. So you can wiggle your wire. So, yep, let me, let right me w wiggle the wire. Nope, that's not it. That's you definitely can. not it because I just wiggled it. Say I'm wiggling it. You can see it. You, it can, it's actually floating right in the vessel. There it is. There it is. Now right you there. see it. Yep. Okay. It's floating right so, in the vessel. So why don't you see where the vessel goes? You're definitely in the vessel right here. Right. Right there is your wire. That's see my that? wire. Right there is your wire. Right. There is your wire. Yep. So here is where your, here is where your bifurcation, almost like, you know, your bifurcation is happening and you're getting into this vessel wall. So you want to move your wire? Yeah, I'm just going to go to another view here. Just to, I'm not going to hate you, don't worry. Sure, sure. Do you want to see it? Go low mag here. So yeah. right where the ostium of the PT is, you're going more perpendicular. You have to go a little bit lower. Hold on. We'll, we'll work with you, don't worry. Yeah. Watch your knees. I don't want to hurt you. There you are. Right. So now you see where my wire is. So that's your wire from above. Wire Can you bring the low. slave monitor closer, guys? Uh-huh. Okay, that's my above wire. Yeah. Right? And my blow wire is going to be even lower right now. Right this here. See your catheter? You can see the catheter right here. Okay. Yep. See your catheter right yep. here. Mm -hmm. That's your catheter. I'm just going to have to move this up slightly, Gooch. There, right there. That's perfect. Now so I can So I can work. see the tip of the catheter. Right. Now I'm going to come with the wire. Okay. You're going to see the wire now. Because I had pulled my post, my wire all the way there. Yeah, see I can see your wire floating right okay, now. now. Wire came back, came out right now. So keep going, keep going. You're in the vessel. You're in the vessel. You're actually perfect, right there. But hold on right now. Now hold on. So I don't, I'm not you, le let's you, just go you're, to you're actually in the vessel. All you have to do is go in a little bit. That's your cap. I can right. see the cap. That's exactly why we went to this point here. Let me just go now. Um, let me just do a little bit of re reverberation here. Okay, let's uh, give me a. Let, could you? I'm just. I don't want to. I don't want to floor you. That's I'm fine. You can floor me. I'm already I'm doing okay. too much here. Balls of steel. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Uh, this should be deleted off online, so I don't. Uh, know. Like a six-second delay here. <laughs> just want to see whether we're there. So it seems to be we're slightly off, huh? Yes, just a little bit. You're at the cap. Bit. So let me now, let me have uh, Ray, uh, I'm going to go back on coronary mode. Ray, just pull back the other wire. One second. So if you can show uh, the screen once. So you can actually see the screen. You can actually see this is your wire right here. Uh -huh. Like PK does, right here. So it, this is your cap. That's your CTO. So PK is trying to get through this vessel right here. So you can actually see his wire moving now, right? And he's getting there, he's getting there. A little bit more. Okay, that I'm you're, getting you're, pushed you're off through. the cap, that's why. Yes, that's perfect. That's where you want to go. Nope. That's where you want to go. That's where you want to go. I can't quite see. Uh, Let me make up a couple. I need a talker on this. Gooch, am I online here? Am I on plane? I pull back, obviously. No, you pull back. Way back. You have to go back in. Not there. You have to go more medial. You have to pull back. A little more medial. You're, you're in your subintimal there. Pull back. Now you're free. Pull back a little more. And that's perfect. Right there. There. I don't have enough penetration tip with this wire. Um, oh, okay. Give me a fielder XT. Uh, that's not going to work. Uh, let me see now. Give me a give me an, a Gaia. O one eight Gaia. I'm going to just go down a little. Yeah, that's fine. O one eight. I have an O one eight. Give me an O one four Gaia. That's a good idea. Or 
already open. Did you want that? Raid. I just need to push this forward here. Oh. You want me to hold it? I'll pull the you wire you're back. You're not please. in the vessel. Pull the wire back. I'm not in the vessel? You're, 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 now you're in the vessel. That's better. That's more in the vessel. That's more in the vessel. See, this is where I think a fine cross would have helped us. That's it. That's, that's your cap. I right know, there. but you I'm not able to penetrate. Yeah. It's, it's very calcified. If you're just not seeing it, it's really fibrotic. I can see it on the ultrasound. Um, if you can show on the ultrasound, that's, that's your cap. Right. It's really, really cal. It's like very fibrotic. So am I going part. medial here? Is that the vessel or no? Uh, no. You have to go. That's, that's where the vessel is. That's exactly where the vessel is. If you just go straight now, I think you'll be in the vessel. I know. This is what I'm having trouble yeah, with. Yeah. That's where the cap is. I can see you hitting the cap. Okay, let's come from above. Give me a confidence from above, guys. So this is the, uh, the opportunity for us to come from above and below, right? Now that we're confirmed where we are, I'm just going to go ahead and put a wire from above and go with a stiff wire from above and try to perforate the cap. And sometimes what you can do is you can do, you can do dual um, uh, sort of perforation, perforating of the cap. So you weaken the cap one way or the other, and then you can slip right in with, like, say, uh, uh, a... a, a uh, uh, what's it called, a fielder wire or a, or a command wire or a very hydrophilic wire tip. But I think, so this is a great case because it illustrates what we're talking about. We're talking about this, you know, using ancillary imaging in complex cases, you know. And I think that's the idea here. You know, we have ancillary imaging with a very good Philips machine here or a Siemens machine, whatever machine you have in your lab. And it can clearly allow us to, can you move your hand, legs please? Oh, it's stuck here, sorry. Uh, and we can go ahead and just see this. Let me get this down there. So, Guj, now I need to know from above, brother. Yeah. So now I need to know from above, and I think, I think we can, we're pretty much there. I think we're going to be able to get through this. But now I need to know right from above. I can see a catheter. So the wire seems is moving. Because sometimes breaking the cra cap from below or above and kind of together will, may, may sometimes help, see? Uh, I, think that, I think we're across, good, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, no, not really. Um, you probably went a little bit subintimal there. I think I'm getting into that collateral again. Where am I? I mean, that's interesting. You're definitely not in the vessel. I'm not in the vessel? It. No, it's, uh, it's floating away from the vessel. It well, that's my point. That's deflected uh, right at the cap. That's your cap. That should be the vessel, right? Mm, uh, you want to go a little bit more forward? I can't see. Uh, I'm there. just going to take the catheter down a little bit. Can you see my catheter? How about now? Mm -hmm. No, not really. Oh, really? Now you are in. Now you are in. Yeah, now I'm in, right? See if, yeah, yeah, I so feel like you are now in. Let now let me try from below. Because both the wires are together. Are they touching, though? That's my yes. question. I can't tell. Yeah. Angiographically, it's crap. You know, you guys know that. Let me just pull this They're wire. Right on top of each other. No. Nope. So, so the ultrasound, uh, PK is wiggling the wire. Both the wires are right on top of each other. So right there, I'm right on top yeah. of it. Let me go to another view. Karthik, just be careful. I'm just going to come. Sure, to absolutely. I'm, no move I'm away far away from, from the mission. Remember, see, we're not quite on top of one of the brother. We're close. You can see in this yeah. view, we're not. No. So I think the, this is where the ultrasound is going to help us to tell us where is the true lumen. Is That's not it. You're, that's you're getting sure. deflected at the proximal cap. That's what it is. No, but I engage that cap, though. See, that's what I'm trying to say. I Are you going into the peroneal, any chance? Uh, no, I don't think so. Everything is occluded. That's why we're coming from below. Let me keep coming from below here. All right, give me, um, I think you guys are going to have to, gonna have to give me a 018, uh, uh, 014 uh, confidence, not a confidence, a fine cross here. Okay. Where is that going, Guj, right there? That's going into one of the vessels, uh, the first branch of the, yeah, the genicular branch of the uh, posterior tibia. 
that's it. That's where you get deflected. That's your cap. I know. All right, give me a guy. Yep, give me a guy. Oh and four. Okay, we'll start with an O and eight. It's fine. So the, what are the other options here, Guj, in terms of wires? I mean, Asma went through a beautiful lecture. I think you can So I'm an 018 wire. We can definitely try an 018 wire. We're going okay. with an 018 guy now. That's what we are trying to do. Yeah. Right. So the question is, what, what, what are your escalation techniques? So I usually use 014 wires. Right. Um, once uh, 014, I run out of the confianza. If the confianza fails, I just move on to an 018 wire. That's yeah, what yeah, I, I'm, I, you're right. And that's exactly what we're doing here because I agree with you. <coughs> so you you penetrating the cap usually PK helps more in a bigger vessel like SFAs or pops. Uh -huh. But in tibials, uh, I don't think ultrasound will help you much to penetrate nope. the cap. No, no, it's because all. it's all about the feel. That's all it is. Um, yeah. You can get into the vessel. You can traverse through the vessel through the micro channels. But right. once you come to a totally closed cap, I don't think ultrasound has any role anymore because I agree. it's very difficult to say you're subintimal or in the vessel wall. Because, because it's a very it's a totally diseased vessel. vessel. Yep. You can only traverse it through micro channels. That's where. That's where. Well, that's why this wire is actually a very good wire. The Gaia O N A Gaia. We use it in the corners all the time, but it seems to be deflecting up. You see that? See, that's where. It, see, that's the. I don't know what. The, that's the other collateral you said, right? That looks like your uh, impossible no. cap, no? No. I just don't like the way that feels. Let me push this up. Hold on. Pull, I want you to pull on the wire when I push. Pull on the wire, pull on the wire. Pull, just pull the wire back. Pull the wire back. Excellent, excellent. Okay, oh jeez. All right, now give me a, uh, give me a, uh, what wire? No, let's try a, a 21, um, a, a Shahi 21. 21 gram tip. Not a 30, a 21. Oh, a start of 20? 20, 20. Okay, a, a start of 20, please. Give me back the confidence enough while he finds a 20. Oh, I think he's got it. He's a guy. Did you get it, Damien, or no? Now, Guja, are you sure that this is where, because my question is, I always worry at this level, are we, are we really at the level of the cap or not? I think we are. De uh, I could definitely see you hitting the cap. Okay. For sure. So. Because to me, why are we floating away is my question, you know? I mean, the, the cap is extremely fibrotic. Okay? I could see it on the, I mean, I can clearly see it on the vessel wall. See, it's like... Yeah, let me see. Oh, careful. No, I don't think, I don't think from above it's going to work, personally. See, that's also going... That's going to, so that's what, that's what I'm doing. It's not above though, that's the problem. So I'm going to have to pull down. So this is some of the challenges we're always facing, right? You know, in terms of these things, like where are we and how is this going to get there? Let me see. Ah, okay, there's your cap. There it is. Oh, I thought it was there. There it is, I'm in. I am definitely in. I was in here. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's make it snare from above. We'll look at. All right. So this is kind of like what Guja worked on it. Okay. Now, I, I just need dive from above now. Hold on. Don't do anything. Let's do a yeah. DSA. Okay. Ready, inject. So I am in the vessel because I'm almost interacting with that other other wire. So now let me just try to move it 
somewhere towards the other wire now. So what I'm going to do is ask Dr. Guja to just pull his wire back. Unless, I, you know, I've perforated into veins before in this manner. Yep, I think that's what I did. Don't you, Guj? Because um, I clearly got through something. Question is whether we come from above since we really can't. One second, good job. Don't let me just go. Oh, no, no. Let me try to redirect from below here. This seems to be a little bit of a different plane. How's that? Let me see. Again, going side by side to the vessel. Let me come toward us. So the question is, what are the other options here, Guja? Um, Would you go for the AT now? I, I mean, the AT is definitely doable, right? I mean, that part we already know. The AT is doable. Uh, we have to do the AT. Yep, we did the same thing. We went right by it. Mm. Because this is too high for the takeoff of the pop, right? Let me see. Yes, definitely. That's, right? that's definitely not. You, you, you are in the, that's the TP trunk. What we saw is definitely the TP trunk. All right, so that means I got to come down below. The only question is, is it an aberrant takeoff of a posterior tibial, right? And you're saying no, right? No. It's a, it's a cap. Whatever we were hitting was definitely the cap. Okay, now let's take a picture. So again, all I'm doing is probing here, trying to figure out you know, which area it is. I know I'm close and uh, trying to probe in. That looks a lot nicer to me. I don't know. I mean, that, that maybe, maybe not. Who the hell knows, but we'll figure it out. That definitely looks better. <laughs> so let's just advance this a little bit. Rail me, please. Oh. Pulled it out. Ray. Hold on, let me do a road map with Gooch. So that what, you know, in terms of the wires, I mean, I think we've gone through a very good algorithm here in terms of what the wires are. Uh, was this where I was before? I think so, right? Or was I more was I more medial, right? No, I think you're okay. <coughs> I was above? Okay. T talker? Meaning, meaning here, no, I got it here. Just pull the wire. Let me just try to see whether I can just squirrel it through here. Nah, I am not in the vessel. See that? No, he's feeling it because I'm not in the vessel, yeah. I'm um, turn off the max list. You okay? No, no, no. Don't do that. Just be patient. That's more like it. You can see the classification of that vessel, PK. The shadow of right where you're hitting, that's perfect. There's a little bit calcification, but more of a fibrosis. But see, that's see, that's your that's your small cap. I am proximal, you're distal. I just need to get this up there. It's like waving hands through the mountain, no? Hey, oh, touch yeah. me. Did you really say that? <laughs> Live? Do you have a shot of 21? I know. Only a short stay. I need a thicker wire than this. It's not going to work. Okay, give me a, give me a, um, a shot of 30 then. Oh, actually, give me a Connect 250T. So, I mean, if you're seeing it at home, I mean, uh, it's, uh, you know, we've gotten to the point where we're, we're kind of shaking hands uh, at the level of the cap. Um, you know, we're just going through different wires the way Asma described. So, Asma, 
the Connect 250T versus the uh, Confianza. Other than being 018, 014 in terms of construction, anything that you see that's a little different? Uh, I mean, it, you know. It's, it, a, it's a, I think it, it was, it's a heavier tip load. Right. Um, it, the Confianza is the Pro 12 is I think t 20 grams and this is a, a 30 gram wire. And okay. Yeah, and it's 018 system. So but the nice thing about it is it's very steerable. You know, it's it maintains its steerability. And I think, and I have a wire introducer, guys. And I think that's that's uh, that's the part I really like. I like the fact that it's. Very can do you ever use um, O three five wires? You know, I don't. I know guys have done it. Uh, you know, and I, th I don't think it's unreasonable in in critical limb cases like this. Uh, but I think that uh, you know, obviously, it's either you're going to succeed or you're going to fail, and you're going to know it very very soon. So that's the that's the point here. So I think we're just going to go ahead. Floor again, brother. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So I know I'm very, very close. I think going from below is probably better than going from above at this stage. Right, definitely. You know, so the <laughs> Give me a little die, guys. Take a picture of Cindy, Cindy Gooch. That's very promising. It looks very promising, but you know, who knows? Again, we've been fooled once, we've been fooled twice. So we have definitely been fooled again. Flora? Just bouncing off the cap. I don't know if you guys can see it. At home, that's what is happening. Right at this stage, right here. Watch this right here. This is where I need to go, and it bounces. Mm -mm. All right. Let's go non-DSA here. One second, Karthik. Let's do one picture non-DSA, at least to understand how far we are. Okay. So close yet so far, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. No. No. So I think here this illustrates the difficulties. I mean, we are we all going to face on this. Give me a um, a 018 Tarumo wire now. Tarumo um, uh, gold tip. So I'm going to try a actually give me give me now a fielder XT. So I'm going to try a dissection technique now. Try to dissect, and then and then and that's then get through idea. get through the wire. It's not, that's not it, brother. That's yeah, I know. You, you that's just go right into, into the, the uh, yeah, into the. We can't yeah. break that cap right now. Fielder XT first. So what I'm going to do is just try to go with the fielder XT. I'm going to try to create a loop, and then go with a dissection plane and try to get down. It would be nice if he, if Dr. Guja can break from above and or I can break from below and then be done with this case. But uh, this is the situation we're facing here. So let's try with a nice fielder XT with a small little tip and see whether we can just kind of find our way to glory here. So our, turn on back on the ACT, Liz. So this is something we often do. We turn it off uh, the Angiomax. Um, you know, it just helps us maintain um, some level of sanity here as we're probing without uh, really seeing uh, the true vessel. So I think at this level, the only other question would be is a, is a, is a possible bypass. And we have to, to discuss with him about the options on that. So obviously Fielder XT is not going to do it here. You can dissect it. Yep. Okay. So give me the, uh, the, 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 other, the other wire. The command. The Not the command, the, the uh, yeah. EM. Take it, take let's, that. Let's try that. So this is what I was hoping for, <laughs> but I don't know whether this is going to work. We'll try. We'll just, well. So give me a torque around this thing. 
So what I'm going to do is just kind of helicopter it and see if it breaks through. So this is where it would be nice to do a roadmap. One second, go off. So let me get a roadmap to see whether we're at least... Try not to move your foot, sir. Okay, so we're heading in a good direction. So off floor, back on floor. Nope. See, it just seems to want to go off into that other direction. The question is, is could it be another ostium gouge? Are we missing uh, a false ostium of this? No, okay. So well, we're definitely not this then. So now give me the, give me the other wire, floor. So this has worked for us a few times where we have been able to f form this sort of a rotational tip and been able to break it through, but this obviously not working here. Nope, that's not gonna work. So give me the start of 30 now. Okay. Sometimes you just might need a spear to like spear through that cap. Mm -hmm. Right, you can just squeeze his uh, calf, make sure it's okay. Parker. Yes. I'm pretty close there, at least in the direction that I like. Okay, good. One second, Goods. It looks like at least yeah. this looks a little favorable. I'm just creating a <coughs> space for you to come through if you have to come. Not you, sir. Oh. What is it? What is he feeling, Liz? Anything? That's perfect. So that's a good spot. I'm just trying to. Problem is, your wire is not even closed, so I don't know where we are here. the vein. That's the what? Uh, that might be going into the vein. Yeah, I agree. All right, I start at 30. So I think here we've done our wire escalation technique. We've come from above. I think what we're going to do is we demonstrated ultrasound uh, access as well as ultrasound visualization of the vessel. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to cross today. So what we may do here is probably at the end of this stop here and then, uh, and then bring him back for an attempt at the anterior tibial artery before calling our surgical colleagues to see whether they can help him uh, with a bypass. Uh, obviously, the bypass is a, is, a, uh, is a viable option in these patients. So therefore, you know, it may be something that we should consider after this being failed. So I'll discuss with the patient regarding <coughs> that. Make a loop from below, a little bit more below. Yeah, I'm going to try to see if it does work. Yep. Let me just, actually, I'm going to go with the Ashtata here. Let me just, I think that's the cap. I'm almost convinced that's the cap. So I'm going to, let me just try here. I've got this much purchase, right? And let me just try <coughs> getting it to that, that uh, level and then see what happens. That's where you get, keep getting deflected. But you're sure that this is the no, cap, right? No, that's so, yeah. I mean, you can see the calcification also on the vessel, right? Slight calcification on one side of the vessel. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this is much closer than yeah. you thought this One side. second. One second. I'm just yeah. go a little bit more LAO to really open it up. Hmm. Ah, see, it's turning right there.
right there. Can you come from above? You can't help, huh? Here. Mm -mm. I don't have any support from above. Right? I know. Nothing. And I have no support from below. Okay. Um, I am open to suggestions, Liz. Maybe start a little bit more medial below. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try that. So again, we're using the angiogram here to try maybe steer the wire a little bit more medial, maybe at this level here. I'm just thinking, what if you tear the vessel from below? No, don't move, sir. Relax. I don't know where you are. I, I think that's the channel we created. And it's nicely going into that channel. I'm assuming no, that is the channel. But that's definitely not the posterior tibial. Look where your catheter is. You're See? No. You're on some other channel. Do you think that's not the posterior to be? Well, let's see. Let's, I don't know whether we should do one more view on the other side. That's here. why I didn't put the wire. See, so. see look where we are. So I think I think I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop here. Uh, I'll tell you why. I think I think that there is. I think one of the one of the good things with interventions is you should know when to proceed and when to stop. And I think at this stage, we've tried pedal access, we've tried above, we've tried yeah. ultrasound. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this yeah. stage we're going to stop here. Um, we're going to we're going to regroup and then we're going to go try to come back and either open the anterior tibial artery and go ahead and try to uh, either get a surgical consultation to see what happens. But at this stage, I think this has been a great illustration of a multiple number of things. I think one is, I think Asma's lecture on the wire and the wire escalation skills was phenomenal. I think that really showed us a lot in terms of how uh, this, 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 this can be done. But the second thing I think also beyond that is that you also saw Dr. Guja so elegantly show us distal, uh, distal access uh, with, the, with the ultrasound, but also show us how to do uh, you know, ultrasound interrogation of the vessel. Unfortunately, there's a very, very fibrotic calcified vessel, which we may or may not be able to get through. So my next wire here, if I do try, is going to be the WIN uh, 250T because it's a very small 013 tip, is it? Oh, yeah, so it's a very small tip, which is a very, very, uh, might find some micro channels. So that's what I'm going to do next. But I think we're going to stop here and we'll see you back next month. So it's, it's, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Guja, uh, everyone here for their help. And then we're going to go ahead and continue and I'll update you next month. So thank you very much for watching.